got one more horse here, another sorrel gelding that does have a little bit more age on him. To show you a horse that's the to show you the demonstration of a horse that may be confirmation and form to function and all the things we've talked about, every once in a while you do have one that does break the rules somewhat. Um, as you'll look at this horse, you'll just first off notice that he's certainly not the quality of the horses that we've previously been showing you. However, every horse does have a function and does have a purpose, and this horse really does, as a riding horse, have a lot of good qualities about him that we do appreciate, um, and we'll show you some of those as we go along. Just real quick to touch on some of his basic conformation. Again, if you start off looking at the horse's head, he is fairly, as you might just say, fairly common in his head. A um, little bit big in his head, you can see some of the age to him, a little bit long in, from eye to muzzle. Um, just doesn't show the overall quality of the previous horses. When you look back here through his neck and his shoulder, this is a horse, again, that is very upright in his shoulder. Okay? The neck really doesn't tie in that terribly low. However, we do have a much more, much straighter shoulder, much more upright shoulder. His wither is still set somewhat back, but you can see his shoulders here is quite upright. This is, in the front leg, um, a horse, as you can just look at quality again, a coarser made horse. He's heavier in his bone, but he too is fairly long in his forearm and short in his cannons, which really is a plus with this horse. However, he is again fairly upright in here. For a horse with the type of age that he has on him, he still relatively is straight in his back. And he's in the 20 to 22 year old range. And so we're talking oftentimes as a horse starts to get um, to this point in his life, we have a little bit more weakness in his back. He's fairly prominent in his withers, um, but still does have a fairly strong back. But probably one of his weakest suits, confirmationally wise, is if you move back here to his hip. In contrast to all of the horses that we just showed you, this horse is very short in his hip. If you look from here to here, um, Libby previously talked about a horse ideally having something of a boxy hip. This is a good example of a horse whose hip is more of a triangle. Okay, As we move through here and here, it's more triangulation in shape rather than nice and boxy because he is relatively short down here through his stifle. Right? Um, okay. Now we'll go ahead and watch this horse track and move and show you how sometimes they do break some of the rules and so don't look at them just by standing there alone. Sometimes you still do need to track them to move and move them to get the true picture of how they're going to perform. Now we've got this horse out here on the lunge line to watch the way that he does track and move. And I'd like you to think back and reflect of the, th of the three previous horses that you've already seen. And again, we talk a lot about the length of their stride both in front and behind, and the symmetry of their stride. Okay? This horse might actually be one of the best examples of, we have, of a horse that we have that has the most symmetrical stride. He probably, in contrast to what his confirmation tells you, maybe does a better job of trotting out of his shoulder, um, reaching out with a bigger stride in front that more comes to match his stride behind. Okay? If you look where the front foot strides out and comes back, his hind foot does come in and nearly steps um, at times into the track of his front foot, which is in contrast to many of the horses that we previously showed you. As I mentioned, his confirmation doesn't say that he should do it. However, you really, when you really watch the way the footfall of this horse's trot, that two-beat trot, and how he pulls his hind leg up into that front foot and takes a more complete full stride with his front leg, um, it is even better accentuated here as Libby pushes him out into a longer, more extended trot. And you can really see how he has a, a, a nice trot, a good stride with his trot. Um, and the other thing to appreciate with this 22, 23-year-old horse is really how sound this horse moves. You don't really see much hitch in his gait. Um, he's very true moving and just trucks it out um, quite nicely. Now as we push him into the lope, again, very similar, very, very much the same. Um, true, he might have a little bit of a bend in his knee, but to me this horse is still moving his front leg out of his shoulder, um, takes a more complete stride in front, and you really have to like the way that he brings that hock underneath himself. He's got good swing to his hock. The hind leg never goes out past the point of his hip or out there past his tail, and he always keeps that hind leg up underneath himself quite good and quite well. Um, you can see how easy it is for this horse to lope and it's not a lot of work to them. And a horse that's not conformed very good, or I shouldn't really say that on this horse, but a horse that um, it's harder to lope with, 
um, we'll have, you know, usually the confirmation um, depicts that it's harder for them to lope, harder to keep that hind end underneath themselves. And this horse really doesn't do that. He's got a lot of stride um, and, again, doesn't really match what you would think him to do when he's standing there. And so a good example that, you know, you need to look at them on the ground, but then you need to watch them track and move. And then even more importantly, you also need to get up on their back and see how they're going to perform. And closing on our talk about uh, confirmation and how it affects a horse's performance ability, uh, we've shown you several different horses here today, uh, both confirmationally correct horses and horses that uh, maybe are lacking in certain areas of their confirmation or quality. Um, I guess the ultimate uh, the decision for you to make is whether or not a horse meets your needs. Uh, every single um, horse that we look at, as Kathy mentioned earlier, certainly has a place. Uh, this horse is a prime example uh, where if you look at him confirmationally, he's probably not going to be your first, your first choice, uh, but he is a horse that certainly does have a function, certainly does serve a purpose. Uh, and one final note for you to certainly keep in mind when you evaluate horse is their attitude. Um, we've got a horse here that is obviously very willing to do what we ask of him, uh, makes him a very enjoyable horse to be around. Um, we've got some other individuals uh, that maybe make you work a little bit harder for their abilities. So they may be a horse that would appear uh, to be an, an excellent prospect, uh, but once you start to work with them, their attitude proves otherwise. And so while we can certainly talk about uh, everything that we stand here and look, about, look at, ultimately you have to work with that horse to be able to determine if they're going to be a good prospect or not.